Hello, thanks for your interest in this mini lecture. This is about a particularly vexing problem because it deals with a situation where we're trying to intersect the line with polygons. And that's not 100% straightforward in a lot of GIS systems. TurfJS gives us the tools to do it, but it's not automatic. So I'm going to show you how to put together some of those tools to accomplish this task. And this is lecture number 62 in a whole course that I've made available on the Udemy platform. If you like what you see, there'll be information on how to sign up for that course at the end of the lecture. So let's get started. Welcome back, students. In this lecture, we are faced with summarizing lines through a set of polygon constraints. And this is similar to the last lecture, where we were tasked with summarizing characteristics of a polygon through an entire feature class of polygons. And Turf had no built-in capability to do this, like it did for points, so we had to write our own. But at least in that case, Turf had a method for intersecting two polygons. And sadly, there's no such method for intersecting a line with a polygon in Turf. But remember, Turf is a toolkit, and it has all the tools that we need to accomplish our task. One of them is a line distance method, which simply returns the length of a line feature, like the function we wrote for calculating the length of a line. The along method returns a point that is a specified distance along a line, so if a line is 10 miles long and you specify 5 miles, you'll get the exact middle of that line. The inside method takes a point in a polygon and returns true or false depending on whether the point is inside the polygon. And finally, the important one that makes everything work, the line split method takes a line in a polygon and splits the line anywhere it intersects the polygon boundary. Now to motivate your thinking on this, the line split method works like this. You start with a line that you pass in as a parameter. It doesn't have to be a straight line like this one. It can be any GeoJSON line string or multi-line string. Then you also pass in a polygon as a parameter. Think of the polygon as a cookie cutter. And you can think either of the line as spaghetti or the cookie cutter as having razor sharp edges. Either way, the polygon goes over the line string and cuts it wherever it hits the line. In this case, we end up with seven individual line strings. Four of them, the green ones, are outside the polygon, and three are inside the polygon. In this example, these are the blue ones. But the line split method returns all seven, so we need to figure out which ones are inside the polygon and which ones are outside, because we're only interested in the ones that are inside. Conceptually, all we need to do is find the midpoint of each line segment, and then we can use our inside method to test whether the midpoint is inside the polygon. If the midpoint's inside, then the entire line segment is inside. In order to get the midpoint of each segment, we can use the line distance and along methods. First we calculate the length of the line segment, and then we use the along method to get the point at half of that distance along the line. Now none of this is very straightforward in terms of intersecting a line with a polygon, and the turf documentation is a bit sparse. But all the tools are there, you just need to figure out a way to put them together to do exactly what you want. So I'm hoping that this lecture stimulates your thinking in how to use the bits and pieces of the turf API to accomplish what you need in cases where a straightforward way of doing it automatically isn't readily available. So, to summarize line constraints, we take a similar approach to summarizing polygon constraints. We simply call our function intersect line by poly feature collection instead of intersect poly by poly feature collection. And we pass it a line instead of a polygon. And inside the function, we proceed just like the polygon function. We declare an array to hold the intersections, loop through the polygon feature class, and test to see if the bounding box of the line intersects with the bounding box of the polygon. If the bounding boxes do intersect, however, then we have to do things a little differently. First, we split the line with the current polygon in the polygon feature collection using the line split method. And this returns a feature class of lines, each one of which is either inside or outside the polygon. So then we have to loop through each of the line segments and test whether it's inside or outside. And if it's inside, then we add it to our array of line intersections. If it's outside, we don't care about it, and so we don't do anything. And then after we loop through all the polygons, we end up with an array of all the pieces where the input line intersects one of the polygons in the polygon feature class. And we simply make that array of line segments a feature class and return it, just like we did with the intersect poly by poly feature class function. So that's easy enough, right? And then we have a function to summarize the line feature collection by an attribute. 
And this will be identical to the summarized polygon feature collection, except that it returns the length of a line instead of an area of a polygon. So let's go write these two functions and finish our environmental impact report with the indirect impacts on burrowing owls. And those indirect impacts will be the length of the line through the buffers around the burrowing owl habitat. So since they're so similar, I'm just going to take this intersect poly by poly feature collection and I'll cut it and paste it. And then I'm going to rename it to intersect line by poly feature collection. And I'll change the name of this first parameter to line. Then we're going to set our bounding box of the line instead of the polygon. We'll change that. Again, we're getting the bounding box of the line that's passed in as a parameter. And this will stay the same. We're still going to loop through all the polygons in the polygon feature collection. We're still going to create a bounding box for each polygon in the feature collection. And this time we're going to test if the bounding box of the polygon in the feature collection intersects the bounding box of the reference line. So I'll change that. And then these next couple lines of code is where things get interesting. Instead of a variable named intersection, we're going to name it SLC for slice. And instead of intersect, we're going to call the line split method. And instead of passing it the reference polygon, we're going to pass it this reference line. And then we can't just test whether the intersection is defined or not, because it's always defined. Even if they don't intersect, we're still going to end up with the entire line as one feature in the slice feature class. So I'm going to get rid of this whole thing. Instead, we're going to loop through this slice feature collection. And this time we're going to use the letter J as our counter variable because we're doing this inside this loop where we have the letter I as our counter variable. And so just to make things clear, we're going to use a different letter. Other than that, our loop is set up pretty much the same. As long as I is less than the number of features in the slice feature collection, the loop's going to continue. And we'll increment the variable J. And then inside the code block for the for loop, just to make our code a little bit easier to read, we're going to create a variable called current slice and set it to the current slice in the loop. Then we're going to create a variable called length, and we'll set that to the length of the slice by calling the line distance method. And we'll just pass it the current slice, and we have to give it units too, so that's going to be kilometers. And then using that length, we're going to create another variable called point middle, and we'll create that using the turf along function by passing it the current slice, the length of the current slice divided by 2. That's going to get us a midpoint and then a units kilometers as well. So now that we have a midpoint of the current slice, we'll test whether it's inside the current polygon using the turf inside method. And we pass it the point middle in the polygon feature that we're interested in. That's the current polygon in our polygon loop. And if the midpoint of that line is inside the polygon, then the whole line is in the polygon. And so we'll simply push it into our feature group array. But before we do that, just like with our polygon intersection, we need to add properties to it because our line slice doesn't have any properties. And we want it to have the same properties as the current polygon. Something's not right here. That needs to be a capital P. And this actually needs to have an S. And so now our feature group array just contains the parts of the input line that intersect the polygons in the polygon feature collection. And they have the same properties as the polygons in the feature collection. And that's exactly what we want. And then we also need to have a summary function. And that's going to be almost identical to the summarize poly feature class. So we'll copy and paste that as well. But this time we're summarizing a line feature class. So we're going to pass it a line feature class, a feature collection. So everywhere that we had feature class poly, we need to replace it with feature class line. And down here where we calculate the area of the feature class poly, we need to change that to line distance of the feature class line. And so we need to do the same thing here. Instead of area, it's the line distance method. And then just to make it clear what we're doing, I'm going to rename this array from array area to array length. And then everywhere we have array area, I'm going to replace it with array length. And that should work. We'll know in a bit. So we'll go up to where we're creating our environmental report in the little pop-up. And I'm going to copy and paste this line. We're going to create a new variable called intersect buell line. 
And he's going to call the intersect line by poly feature class. And instead of passing it the buffer line, we're going to pass it the actual line. And instead of the layer burring owl, we're going to pass it the layer burring owl buffer. And I'm going to copy and paste this too. This is just so we can see if it works. We're going to take those line intersections that got returned from our intersect line by poly feature collection function and put them on the map with a bright red color. And then I'm also going to copy and paste this block of code. I'm going to use the same buell summary variable just to keep things simple because this lecture is getting a little long. But this time we're going to summarize a line feature class. That feature class is our intersection buell line feature class that got returned by our intersect line by poly feature collection. And then I'm just going to make a couple changes. This is going to be indirect impacts. And the third array that gets returned by the summarized line feature class now holds lengths instead of areas. And those lengths are already in kilometers. So we're not going to divide it anymore. That was to convert square meters to acres. We're going to leave it in kilometers, but we're going to get three decimal places. And that way we'll be able to see exactly how many meters are in this line, even though the units are actually kilometers. All right. We'll refresh our web map. I'm going to zoom into this area again, then we'll draw a line. So we'll start right in the middle of this guy, come up into about the middle of here, go right through here. And this time we'll pass right through the buffer, but not actually through the habitat itself. So this is not quite right. It looks like our intersection function worked just fine, because we're seeing the length of the line through all the buffers in red. So that part's working right. Something's not working right there with the summary. So let's see what that is. Our Google Developer Tools isn't giving us any error, which I kind of didn't think it would. It means we have a logical error, not a syntax error. So let's go back. What I want to do is console log this arbul summary variable. Then I'll be able to take a look at it. That'll tell me if the error is in a summarized line feature collection function or if it's somewhere down here in my code. I have a feeling it's in this function, but we'll know for sure in a sec. So we'll refresh and we'll draw another line. It's just going to go right through here like so. We'll keep it simple. So again, the intersection feature class is okay, but our arrays are not okay. Looks like the count is right and the length is probably okay. The problem looks like it's going to be right here in the unique value array. So that gives us a good clue where to look. There's not anything that's jumping out at me. I'm going to try console logging the current attribute variable and also console logging the index. And I'm also going to console log the line feature class just to see what's coming into the function. Zoom in here. We'll draw a line that starts here, comes through here, and ends there. So this is our feature collection of slices, which is right as far as the length. Something's not right here though. That's where our problem is. This properties only have properties, but it's got the properties of an entire GeoJSON feature in there. And that's not right. So let's go see where that's created. Yep, right there. I'm setting the properties to the feature. And it should be set to that feature's properties. All right, it's going to work this time, I promise. All right, I'm going to draw another line. This time I'll come right through here into this one. We'll go through the buffer of this one, but not actually through the habitat itself. Yeah, it looks much better. You notice in our counts here, the count of undetermined is one more for indirect impacts, is one more than it is for direct impacts. That's because it went through this buffer here, so that counts as an indirect impact because it's close enough to the habitat to have an effect, but it's not directly impacting the habitat. It doesn't actually go through it. And that's exactly what I wanted to see. The only other thing I do here is I probably put acres and kilometers so we know what these units are supposed to be. So that's easy enough to fix. I'm just going to put a space acres in here and a space kilometers there. All right. I will zoom in just for fun. 
I'll draw a line straight across here and see what happens. We know we have at least one active and one inactive eagle nest. A bunch of burrowing owl polygons and probably some hawks as well. But the actual hawk buffers are clustered up into our marker clusters so we can actually see where those are. But it's a pretty safe bet that some of those are going to impact this line. Yep, so we have one active eagle's nest, one inactive, a bunch of hawks, and now we have acres and kilometers. So we have units for our direct impacts and indirect impacts. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the end of this course. We have a tool that provides an instant environmental assessment for both points and lines that the client can use to try and design a pipeline route that's going to minimize the effects on the environment. And that's going to be a very useful tool for them because it's always going to be in their best interest, whether they like it or not, to minimize the amount of environmental constraints that they need to deal with. So I'm going to stop this lecture. I have one more short summary lecture, and that's going to be the end of this course. But I'll probably add some bonus material too as well later on. So keep an eye out for that.